Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice factorial equation. We have n factorial plus n minus 2 factorial equals n cubed plus 1. And we're going to be solving for n values. n is an integer, right? It's actually a non-negative integer. So the smallest n can be is 0. Now, you can definitely plug in some values and guess and check, but that may not give you all the solutions. That's going to be very cumbersome too in some cases. So let's go ahead and take a look at a graph. Well, before the graph, we need to look at what Wolfram Alpha provides for this problem. Too bad, Wolfram Alpha, you did not find an integer solution. Maybe there are no integer solutions. The only solution is 1.37 something. What does that mean, right? This is kind of weird, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. The factorial function can be defined for all real numbers using the gamma function, which is some type of integral, whatever. But for integers, you can kind of, it's a special case, basically, right? Obviously, this graph will also include integer solutions. However, this graph, as it is, does not show you because that's what Wolfram Alpha provided, right? And there's a single intersection point, as you can see, one point something, right? What was it? 1.37 something. Yes, with the gamma function for real numbers, you can get that solution, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at an integer solution. We are looking for integer solutions, but are there any? And how can we look for them? So let's start with n factorial plus n minus 2 factorial equals n cubed plus 1, which is the original equation. So I'm going to start by factoring n factorial. As you hopefully know, factorials can be written as a product, and you can stop at any point. So for example, 5 factorial is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the product of numbers 5 through 1. But if I, you, I wanted to express this part as a factorial, I can and write this as 5 times 4 factorial. Or I can focus on the last three terms and write this as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. You get the idea? So factorials contain smaller factorials. Good. Or in other words, they are divisible by smaller factorials. Okay. So now we can do this since n minus 2 is less than n. Are you convinced? Hopefully. We can go ahead and expand n factorial and write it as n times n minus 1. And don't stop here because notice we have n minus 2 factorial. So stop at n minus 2 factorial. Great. We can do this, right? And you can plug in values as long as n is greater than or equal to 2. This should work, right? Now, let's go ahead and plug it in. We have n factorial plus n minus 2 factorial. So it's going to be n, n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial plus n minus 2 factorial. And if you want, you can stick in uh, 1 here it's because we're going to factor next. Wait, what? How factor? Using a common denominator. I mean a common factor, right? So this is a common factor, n minus 2 factorial. It's really helpful if you can take out some terms and simplify this expression. Now, we have inside n times n minus 1. If you distribute, you're going to get n squared minus n plus, you see the blue one? That's going to go here. That's why it's important to write 1 because when you don't write it and when you take out an n minus 2 factorial, there's nothing left. So should I write a 0? No. We are talking about a product. So you should always write 1 as a placeholder. 0 is used for addition and subtraction, right? Well, subtraction is addition, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, this is equal to n cubed plus 1. And wow, this looks more complicated than the original one, doesn't it? Kind of, but actually yes and no. Because n cubed plus 1 is factorable. I hope you've done your algebra. And you know that this is the sum of two cubes. Very important. Formula a cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b. It's factorable. a squared minus ab plus b squared. So n cubed plus 1 is n cubed plus 1 cubed, so it can be factored as n plus 1 times n squared. By the way, if you write the first term uh, or the factor, the second factor is easy because you have to square the a, you have to square the b, and you have to multiply them together. But make sure if there's a plus sign here, put a minus sign, they have to differ. Okay, they have to be different in other words. 
Anyway, so this is going to become minus sign because of this is a plus sign. Plus, I mean minus n, n times 1 is n plus 1. Okay, hopefully you get the idea. Practice a little bit and you'll get it. It's very helpful. Now, I noticed that n squared minus n plus 1 pops up again. Great. Left hand side, sty is the same. That British accent. n squared minus n plus 1 equals, and now we have n plus 1 times n squared minus n plus 1. Awesome. I got the same factor. I could put everything on the same side and factor it. No, no, no. You don't really need that. There is an easy way to do it. First of all, if you have something like AB equals AC, what would you think? Hey, cross out the A's and B equals C. That's not the only solution. A could be 0 too. So there are actually two solutions here which you have to consider. So before you cancel it out, you can think about it, that common factor being 0, because 0 times anything is 0, and 0 times someone else or something else is also 0. So anyways, that's kind of like a shortcut. I hope that makes sense. So this is what I'm trying to say. First of all, consider the case n squared minus n plus 1 equals 0. But guess what? This is not 0 if n is a real number. Is it 0 if n is a complex number? Absolutely, yes. Think about cube roots of something, right? But we're looking for integer solutions. So that has to be real, right, first. And I can safely cancel it out because it's never, ever going to be 0 in the real world. And I end up with something like this. Cool, cool. Did we really solve the problem? No, not really, but we're getting closer. Look at this. We have a single factor that equals uh, kind of like single expression. And the power of mathematic or substitution comes in. Let's go ahead and call this k. You know I love substitution. If you've seen my videos, I use that a lot, and it's awesome. So now, but what does that assumption mean? n minus 2 equals k implies n equals k plus 2. You don't you like that word? And that implies n plus 1 equals k plus 3. Just add 1 to both sides and you get it. So we got to do two replacements. Replace n minus 2 with k, so that gives us k factorial from here. Are you following? Okay. n plus 1 is k plus 3. Uh-oh, that's cool. Yes, but this is not the end of it because we're going to do a little bit more hocus pocus. Ready? Now, we're going to do this. Now, you... At this point, you're probably guessing some solutions because factorials definitely grow much faster. You can graph it, you can compare it, so on and so forth. But let's do it a little bit more fun. Subtract k and expand k factorial. Yay, this is fun. It's kind of like a, what is that called? Matryoshka? Yeah, you open it up and you have to open it up again. There's another one. There's another doll inside. You keep doing it, but that doesn't go on forever, right? Anyways, there are some limitations. But... Oops, I forgot to put the factorial on. Sorry, sorry, factorial. Now, we're going to take out a k and k minus 1 factorial minus 1. Yay, this is factored. Awesome. And 3 is prime. It's such a nice prime because it's the first odd prime. Very small, manageable. Now, look at this. This product is equal to 3, and we're looking for non-negative integer solutions. So, the smallest we can get is 0, obviously. k equals 0 is going to destroy the whole thing annihilator that's what zero is called anyways so we have two options k is either one or three can k be negative one or three we also have to consider those because remember we did substitution we said that k is n minus two so we have to think about it if k is n minus two k equals one implies so in other words n is going to be two more than k if k is negative one n is going to be one and if if this is a negative 3, it's going to be negative 1. So this is not going to work, but we ha still have to check negative 1. Make sense? So those are the k values that might work. If k is equal to 1, then we get 1 times 0 factorial minus 1. That is 0, 1 times 0, which is 0. That's not going to work. Too bad. What about k equals 3? Let's test it out. 3 times 3 minus 1 factorial minus 1. And 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 factorial is 2, 2 minus 1 is 2, 3 times, uh oh, what am I talking about? Wait a minute. I think I messed up somewhere. So if k is equal to 3, okay, 3 minus 2 is, okay, I'm sorry, I don't know how I ended up with this. 2 minus 1 is 2, are you serious? 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, yes. k equals 3 works. What about negative 1? Let's test negative 1. Negative, uh oh, negative 1 is not going to work because this is going to give us negative 2 factorial 
and that's problematic. Okay, so forget about it. I don't know, I don't know what I was talking about. The only value that works is k equals three, but k is I forgot n minus two. Okay, n minus two is equal to three, so n equals five is the only solution, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.